uh, I actually just got back from my doctor. I always go like super early in the morning and whatever. I had like a blood test, like, a, you know, a normal blood test done like, I don't know, two, three weeks ago. She like gassed me up so hard about how good my levels were. She was like, I've never seen people with levels like this before. <laughs> like as consistently healthy as mine were. So I was trying so hard not to laugh. I literally just told her, I was like, if you knew what I ate, you'd have, you would never say that. <laughs> so let's start. So, you know, this is something I've never considered before, but I have quite a few people who come to my, my YouTube comments and they'll say something like, you know, I feel obligated to improve faster or anything like that. They're like, like late thirties, early forties. And they're like, you know, I want to, I want to be good before I feel like I'm ancient. I mean, I can't talk on that subject as cleanly. There are people who are 20 years up on me and they, they're perfectly fine in fighting games. I would just say like, you know, to, in my opinion, I don't believe it's a factor. However, there's always a lot of debate around, can everybody be good? This is basically a very common thing you need to break down first. I believe, yes, there is of course natural talent, right? I'll give you an example. When I was new to fighting games, I would say I had zero natural talent. But what I had, had a lot of time. <laughs> I started playing when I was 16. That should tell you a lot. I essentially compensated for that with just playing and like really thinking about it. This part is the most important part as to what we're going to discuss. Everyone has topics or fields they excel in, right? I've talked about this a ton of times. You know, some people excel in math, some people excel in history. <laughs> in fighting games, the way you can excel is situational. Let's say like you like playing mid-range characters. You may not understand a fighting game as clearly if you play a top tier compared to if you play a mid tier compared to if you play a low tier. This is one of the hardest parts about learning fighting games. It's actually assessing your own ability and being able to like, essentially understand how you learn and what's effective for you. It's a lot of trial and error. Everyone is studying for the same class, but reading different books. Uh, I think the misconception around not everyone can be good at become a top player in fighting games is a misunderstanding of this concept. Not everyone's gonna be similar in terms of like how much time, when they play. Fighting games are a blank canvas. People can tell you what to put on the canvas. Draws this way or paints this way. So I'm gonna do the same thing, right? Sometimes, our problems can become more complicated than they seem because we're so set to one mindset. The reason why, to, just to summarize, I believe can everyone become a top player in fighting games is because at the end of the day, what matters most isn't really your physical ability, right? There are physical attributes relating to it, but it's really your mentality and how open you are to digesting things. This will make more sense as I go on, but I like to call it, I wanna say ignorant learning, but it's, I don't know, it's not really like it. It's like, I'm gonna just say ignorance is bliss, right? That's basically, that's that's our topic for today. The most valuable and important part of any fighting game is understanding how it functions and how it works. Most people do this without even thinking about it, right? Most people don't even realize that they're they're learning. In fact, this is almost like, you know how teachers in school, like trying to fool your, like fool the kids into like learning is fun. They emphasize like learning can be fun. I think a lot of people have that mindset. Learning is not fun. Learning is separate from just playing. And I bet you 99% of people in here do this. A lot of people just play, learn the characters and have fun, right? It's a natural progression of just enjoying the game. You figure out what the character does. Maybe you're like, oh, I'm, I wasn't really looking for this, but now I know they have that, right? Like you adapt really well without even really thinking. Really the biggest flaw they have at this point is just a lack of experience overall, right? Which in turn, they just play and they fix, right? It's very straightforward. Experimentation is not so complicated when you're just enjoying the experience. A lot of people experiment pretty freely and they don't mind it, right? Like a lot of people are just like, oh, I'm new. I'm, I'm just figuring stuff out. I'm having fun. Being new, is an excuse sometimes. So, like, and it's a very reasonable one, right? Like no one expects you to do some fucking kickflip 1080 no scope shit if you're new. Most people peak at learning like this. As in, when they improve past this point, they don't learn as smoothly. Why do you think that is? As you get experience, you may start to associate wins 
losses or interactions with external things. Even though like at first, like let's say when you're new, you may not even think about it in the terms of character strength or who's like, what move is good. You may just think like, oh, that's good. I should try maybe these other moves around. Usually as you get good and you know what to expect, this can create even beginner players or newer players who have absolutely no understanding of why things work. A lot of people in lower intermediate uh, areas that especially it's tend to stagnate use tier lists a lot despite tier lists being created for top level players even though it doesn't apply to them in fact most people would directly state that this does not apply to you it still creates the problem of the fact that they are internally disassociating ownership of these situations right essentially you're learning suboptimally from this method on good option complain do something about it bad option complain don't do anything 99% of people do this. This is why, actually, I highlight Leffen a lot. Leffen never shuts the fuck up about complaining. Like, let's be real. In the span of a year, I have only seen this dude complain. Anytime he complains, he usually will, like, be like, okay, this character's good, I'm gonna play it. And that's really what I want to see as a competitor, right? Like, that's, that's what I want. Like, if you complain all the time and you don't do anything about it, then I don't give a fuck, right? I, no one cares. The problem with experience is even though theoretically, if you learn at the same rate as we were talking about earlier, most people will just improve. They'll, it's just like fun. Experience can create an interesting balance where some people refuse, I'm putting that in all caps, by the way, to accept they were wrong, uh, they lack correct information in a matchup, or maybe just in general, misunderstood interaction. Like no matter how like how hard it is, how easy it is, fighting games are ultimately built around like the more you know, the less you know, that sort of thing, right? Once you have a basis, a lot of people tend to cling to the experience as a base. It is a little Dunning-Kruger, yeah. So Dunning-Kruger in games like this is extremely common because there's essentially the trap of fighting games is that it always implies to you that you're doing something correctly. If you win a lot, I mean, why would you not think like you're, you're good, right? They can be kind of like a shield. If you associate wins, loss, to interactions purely with ego, you may care more about your ego than actually playing the game. Some people, their ego with fighting games is so much of a problem that they actually play less fighting games because they're concerned that they may feel bad if they lose, right? They may over-respect people who perform well. So like you could say like, oh, this person may think this person's a top player, they're the best. I gotta if I play against them, I gotta lock up, play super clean, right? And just like essentially I, I wrote this down as a note, uh plays like their their family is held hostage. Like they're just like I gotta I gotta play super tight. I gotta play super well. You know what I mean? It's like now that's okay. Now here's the problem though. They may under respect people who don't perform as well as them. So this one is one of actually the major problem here. Both these things can block your improvement, but the former or the latter, sorry, is one of the most important ones. People can beat them with the same things that high level players do. They will not consider it. Like, let's say you're really bad on defense for the reason, right? And someone uses like a very like thorough, like kind of like flow chart that calls out your defensive habit. You may just think like a lot of people, they'll see right they'll just watch themselves get called out like this and instead of having a critical thought right they'll just be like this dude random grub when you do this you are actively not improving some people actually go out of their ways not to improve if they feel like they've been slighted by someone they think is not as good as them ironically if you feel this way and you you essentially let your ego block you you again create the problem of actively not improving. I call this spike system. They refuse to learn in casual, actively or not. Now, they will play in tournament and take it omega serious. They lose, they have a bit of a breakdown. They then study extremely hard. They make up for the lost matchup inexperience from <laughs> from their casuals by essentially feeling so hurt and disappointed you feel obligated to dedicate time to compensate let's say they're like a top 32 player where it's like they can clearly do pretty well they're definitely like not in the like a contender for winning this tournament but they they do really well right the players who don't compete don't learn from players who do compete 
they learn from. The amount of people that fall into this bubble is still small. So that means a majority of the time you're playing players that essentially you don't respect and you maybe on average would not learn from. But despite the fact that they can still take advantage of your flaws and like what you do wrong, you still just essentially say, well, they're like, whatever, I don't care. You'll essentially be in a position where you're just not learning as fast as everyone else. Naturally, over time, you get the clip by a rate of improvement. General rate of improvement is very important. How much you actively digest is an important thing. I actually learned quite a few things from my video, if you guys missed it on Yomi. A lot of people actually talked about when I said, look at the screen, I actually didn't have the great, the greatest wording for that. A lot of people use the word active learning to describe it. I think that's such a good way to put it. Basically, like you can look at a movie and watch it but there's also like really like digesting what the movie is about i'm gonna i'm gonna summarize it a little bit here right basically there are situations where players can essentially predict what you're doing through how badly you want to win a lot of people have this panic that sets in when something doesn't happen over time so sometimes from wanting to win the best option is to do nothing a good example is like if you play tekken like a lot of people go for like the health sweep to close out games or like a low or some rps play styles are built from this and also this is why they tend to stagnate people who force rps from things that may not be worthwhile essentially they build a system around it some players are actually really good but through how predictable a lot of people can be just the fact that they focus on rps or force too much rps is that actually they become known for forcing too much rps and as a result some people can essentially get ahead of them in ways that they would not be able to during a more standardized like more fundamentals based playstyle. you stat dump into one thing or like the opponent like dumps their skills countering it because to improve at fighting games, you have to lose. And not only do you have to lose, you have to lose and you have to learn from it. So if you focus too much on winning and what that may mean, but if you want to compete, then this is probably quite literally the worst thing you can do. So first of all, a majority of players learn through systems like this. And as a result, I think that the FGC's skill level is abysmally low where it could be. Not because like these players are just not good enough, or aren't enough, or whatever. I think that the way that a lot of people learn inherently block themselves off from growing so much further. And I think as a result, a lot of people essentially lose their potential or as far as they can go through all of these things kind of getting in the way. One of the best ways you can see this, right, is high level player and says uh, remaining player base, right? Mid level players learn through high level players, right? Like Twitter, videos, playing, whatever, right? Like just low level players learn through getting beat up by mid level players, right? Simplized way of viewing it. It means that one, they're not improving as well as they could. Two, the mid level players aren't improving as much as they could. And three, the low level players are probably not going to learn as much as they can. Because a lot of people have like, again, the spite system and stuff like that, especially easy, right? In the modern era, for new players to surpass older ones. Although obviously like game functionality is a product, why a lot of these players still don't do better despite experience and understanding more abstract concepts like RPS and risk award and things like that is because essentially the older ones just didn't learn it. The real secret to improving, literally your capability of improving is all in your head. Your mentality is what dictates how good you are, how good you become. If you were taught everything in the game, every interaction, every way someone would try to play versus you, it is irrelevant. You do not try to take in the information. The players, uh, that tend to do this, right? That they tend to over-respect people to, who perform well. It is not to improve. It is actually as like a means of status. Some people who are in that bubble care more about appearing good than being good. They win, they use it as a kind of a basis to move their own perception of themselves. The benefit of why this is good is people can actually improve really rapidly by doing this because a lot of the time they have the same sort of experience as they're learning. It's when you attach all these extra things to it. Yeah, so if you if you want to just fight people who are better, then that's like that's not a problem. This is unrelated. Think of these things, these two things connected. If you under-respect people who don't perform as well as you, but you do this, you may need to do some soul search. This creates one of the worst systems where you get the status 
of being good. And then when you get to the point of winning, your winnings don't matter because people don't respect how you how you do it. And usually this comes up extremely common. There's so many players that get zero respect, just, I don't know, based on their character or whatever. So even if you care about this, uh, it works against you nowadays. It's very realistic that you'd be stuck on that version and they would know what the fuck they're doing. They basically just focus more about shifting themselves around on the hierarchy than actually anything else. That's really all it boils down to. If you focus too much on that, you end up becoming very, like, you focus on one thing right? That's your, usually your skill. And their ego essentially gets in the way. And this is one of the worst things because like this is very common and it's not because people are wrong or like people are stupid. It's literally the game as you learn. You have fun playing the game. You win a lot. You have fun with it. It teaches you to value winning. So naturally you care more about winning because it teaches you to win, to focus more about winning right currently losing is considered shameful losing equal loss of status like maybe i lose like people i think i should be beating maybe i can't beat them or whatever i guess it's like negative feedback that's really how they they view it losing is actually one of the most beneficial things for your improvement like let's say mid-level player loses to nago with punishes your 2s 2s with his 2s right? they would not dissect they would not even think about the whiff part they would just say oh nago's broken this is kind of what i mean by refusing feedback is bad you can see that really when we talk about this it's almost like when most people hit like a mid-level it starts to get to want to improve more by improving less a side of mentality that like a lot of people don't really talk about is actually how far you're willing to go and how far your default is. Everyone has like a comfort preference to fall back on, right? Depending on what it is, some things may feel like unfeasible or like impossible. When in actuality, your comfort zone is so long, it's actually more like you refuse to do it yourself. Everyone has a comfort zone. A lot of people do not realize this, but they are essentially associating their own comfort zone with their experience. So like, it doesn't matter actually how bad or how good a matchup is at this level, right? Most people tend to just base their opinion purely off their comfort zone, right? I mean, when I say it like that, that makes sense, right? It's clear. If you play a matchup where your main strategy does not work, you may feel like you can't do anything. You may feel like, oh, I have to do Dash Bandit Bringer, or I have to do like Fafnir every time. When in actuality, you don't have to do shit, it's just you feel like you have to do something. You don't have to. Fighting games are usually all mental. Of course, there are like high execution things. Ultimately, like interactions, how you play against people, like they're all, it's all mental. It's not physical at all. Really, I could end this now by just saying, look at the screen and digest what happens on screen. And that would be an effective outro, but I won't because I'm not a sick. Your capabilities and your answers to things depend on your willingness to take them at face value. And I, I've been, honestly, I've had this save for about five hours, so I'm gonna just play it now. Really, the, your worst enemy is yourself. Simply play, there's nothing more to improving at fighting games than simply being willing to respect what the other player is doing. One of the most beautiful things about fighting games is that you are constantly able to grow. When I say things like this, people are like, wow, of course. Like, I, of course, I'm, I'm not really thinking as thoroughly as I could. I'm not really... When I say all these things, I think most people would be like, absolutely. The problem is when you play the game and you get hit by Beyblade for like the Good third day, time, you Robo. may not be as happy. Right. What I would recommend, keep notes and reminders that you should, should be digesting as much information as you can. Don't be afraid to focus on individual things. Let's say, oh, I feel like my defense is not good. Why not just like focus on trying to improve your defense? Try different things. Just specifically go out of your way and be like, experiment. Even right now, if you have been doing nothing like OSing and whatever, if you watched it and you were like, 
wow, this really inspires me. You know, I, I have been doing that. I don't want to do that anymore. The thing is, improvement is not so linear as just like be a better player. It's mentality. You're only as good as your last game or a tournament if you refuse to use the info from it. A lot of comfort on this comes from having to really accept the fact that you're not going to be perfect all the time. Yeah, I agree. I actually think that's such a, that's such, that's so true. Hyperbola really poisons possibility. That's such a good way to put it because it's very true. Anyways, that's basically it. Uh, I think kind of this sort of video and content would be really helpful, especially if you're newer and you're like really curious, like how do people tend to do this? A lot of this is a little meta and abstract, but I hope you guys got a lot out of this. There is one more thing. I'm going to recommend. I won't tell you guys to do this because not everyone wants to do this, obviously. Basically, learning as a community or a group can be helpful. And the reason for this is some people actually just like cannot, <laughs> they demonize the other person for whatever reason, like, I don't know, insecurity or whatever. But I think like, honestly, one thing that helps and honestly will continue to help. There's no real disadvantage to do that or to not do this. Just like talk to them, be like, oh, this person is, is good. Like I'll ask them like, oh, this auto mix up was really fucking me up. Uh, what should I do? Something like that, right? Not everyone's going to be nice. Not everyone's going to be able to help you. But at the, end, at the end of the day, you may make a new friend. Would Very cool. Very cool. There's just really no reason not to, right? Like the players that tend to ask these sort of questions tend to go the furthest because, I mean, simply put, they're getting more information than other people. And uh, if you guys are looking for friends, you should check out the Boss Empire Discord featuring me at the top.